But I want to begin today by talking about maybe something maybe you've never heard before. But I don't know who thinks about these things, but sometimes people ask the strangest questions. Uh, somebody was sitting around one day, obviously you'll find out it was a scientist, and they were trying to discover how many atoms were in one drop of water. How many at a molecular level and an atomic level atoms would you think would be in five one hundredths of a milliliter of water? That's the average drop of water is somewhere around five uh, one hundredths of a milliliter of water. I want you to, to begin to get a number in your head and I want you to think with, just try to guess, how many atoms would you say are in one drop of water? All right, don't, don't say it yet. I want you to get it in your head. I want you to have a guess. At an atomic level, how many atoms are in one drop of water? Now, I want you around you so you appear really smart. I want you to share what you think the number is. How many atoms would you say are in a drop of water? Come on. Just turn to your neighbor. Some of you ain't guessing because you don't want to be wrong. Okay. I did just do that. You're right. So... There's a guy by the name of Dr. He's an Italian scientist, Dr. Abede Avogrado. I always think of avocado when I think of his name, but it's Avogrado. He actually, it's called the Avogrado Constant. He actually figured this out. And uh, he discovered that in one drop of water that there are 6.2. 022 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms in one drop of water. That is just a little bit over six quintillion atoms in one drop of water. Now, how many of you got close to that number? Okay. Anybody say a billion? Come on, a trillion? So you said a billion? You said five billion? Ooh, come on. You were close. Just a few trillion off there. But... Uh, you know, when I, when, I, when I heard that story, and I thought of this, I thought that s things are not as simple as they look. And there may be more to something than I even know. And when I think about this word that we've looked at for almost 25, 26 weeks now, this, this word grace, it's not as simple as it looks. And there's a whole lot more to it than we even know at a molecular or atomic level. Our definition of grace that we've used over and over again is this. It is the abundant supply of God's goodness towards you, doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. I love that definition. It, it's abundant. It's never just enough. It's always more than enough. It, it, it's a supply word, and it's doing for you what you cannot do for yourself. That means when it's doing, that means that it's not passive, that it is progressive, that it is working, that it is, has an energy, a synergy to it, has a momentum to it. And what I want to do now is just look at that doing part. When, when grace goes to work, What's it do? And at a, an atomic level, molecular level of the word grace, I would say it, it is this, is that if grace were to have a first name, its, it, its first name would be favor. In fact, in a lot of the older translations of the scriptures, if you have some of those uh, good old King James versions, the word grace and favor are used interchangeably. In fact, the most common definition of grace you will find is the unmerited favor of God. We've talked 20-something weeks about grace, and I've never mentioned the word favor because I wanted you to see that it is more than just favor. But now as we close out this year, I want to speak to you on what it, how it relates to favor. It's that unmerited, unasked for, undeserved kindness of God. Uh, 
a, a favor is when you get something that you're asking for that you don't deserve. And, and, and that's what grace is. It is the promise of divine assistance. Favor has a lot of ways that it expresses itself. Favor is the shortcut biblically to uncommon success. Favor is the shortcut to uncommon success. Favor can take you from a prison to a palace in a moment of time. That's favor. And what I want to look at is just this word favor. Here's what I'll say about this. Biblically, favor is the X factor. Favor is the X factor. Now, I didn't know this until recently, but the term X factor is actually in the dictionary. Both the Cambridge and the Oxford Dictionary, just in case you were wondering. Here's what the Cambridge Dictionary says about X factor. It is the quality that you cannot describe that makes someone very special. You can't describe it, but you know it's there, but it's a differentiating quality on that person's life. The Oxford Dictionary says this, it is the variable in any given situation that could have the most significant impact on the outcome. It is the hidden variable in any situation that most likely has the greatest impact on the outcome. It's the X factor. And I would just say to us that biblically, favor is the X factor. It's that quality that differentiates one person from another. It is that variable in a situation that determines an outcome. And what I want to look now is I want to look at how, how do we obtain favor? How do we increase favor? And what does it look like in our life when it shows up in, 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 in correlation with grace? So the first thing I want you to know about favor is this, is that favor is a position. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. Favor, it has a position. I'm going to read two verses to you, and then, and then we'll, we'll get to, to the explanation but favor is the reward for cooperating with God. Favor is the reward for cooperating with God. That's what it is. It is a reward of God on your life. Now, let me read to you two verses. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2 says this. Hear what God says. When the time came for me to show you favor, I heard you. When the day arrived for me to save you, I helped you. Listen, this is the hour to receive God's favor today, for today is the day to be saved. Oh, I like that. But notice that God's favor is connected to salvation. St. Corinthians 5.18 says it like this, This new situation is wholly God's doing, for he is the one who restores us to his favor through the work of Christ. So favor is connected to the Son, and God's favor on your life comes to you through the person of Jesus Christ. Now, about 250 years ago, um, something happened for the first time in the city of London. In fact, there is a man by the name of Jonas Hannaway, and I'm going to talk to you about him in a, in, a, in, a, in a sermon in the future, but today I bring him up for a different reason. Jonas Hannaway is buried in Westminster Abbey in London, but he is an anomaly in, in that cemetery because he's buried with kings, and queens. He's buried with world prime ministers, dignitaries the world over. Uh, you got great scientists. You have uh, Dickens is buried there. Darwin is buried there. I believe Churchill is buried there. But then you have this guy seemingly that nobody knows, Jonas Hemaway. And he is famous for two reasons, the first of which I will tell you today. But he was the first man in London 250 years ago 
to ever use an umbrella. Okay? Up until that point, real men got wet. Okay? I can only imagine the ridicule that he must have received walking down the street as a male, as a man, with an umbrella on. <clears throat> but ultimately, he was the seed that changed culture, and both genders were able to, at that, I guess, walk underneath the umbrella. They called it at that time, this is good, they called it the portable roof. You could take the roof in your house with you wherever you go. And, but I like this because an umbrella doesn't change the forecast. It just allows you to experience it in a different way. And when it comes to God's favor, when you receive Jesus Christ and cooperate with God's salvific plan, you come underneath in a salvation way, you come underneath the umbrella of God's favor through the Son. And now when God looks at you, he looks at you in terms of the Son, and you are now in good standing, and you are in favor. The smile of God has come upon you. Your sin has been forgiven. Your guilt and shame have been removed. In an instantaneous way, you have come under the umbrella, the favor of God. Ooh, that's good. In fact, just help me out and preach a little bit to somebody next to you. You are favored of the Lord. Come on, turn to him and say, you're under favor. Now, now I say this to, to, for a couple of reasons. It is a position that we have in Christ. So favor is a position. It is a standing that we have in right relationship with the Son. But Jesus is more than just a person to believe in. He is a principle to follow. And so that means this, that I have a portable roof with me. And that now I have been saved. I am invited into the house of Jesus. But now, get this, now I have a portable roof. I take Jesus with me wherever I go. I walk with Christ. I walk in step with the Holy Spirit. And that means this, is that the favor of God can grow and increase on my life as I walk and obey the principles of Jesus Christ and his word. Deuteronomy 28 says it like this. It says that these blessings shall overtake you. They shall come upon you if you obey my voice. And so I want to increase the umbrella over my life. I want to walk in step with the Holy Spirit so that I can stay in continual favor with God. Now watch this. I will still experience fa failure. I will still experience pain. I will still experience sickness. I will still experience health issues. I will still experience loss and death. The forecast doesn't change. However, in the midst of that, God's favor will go to work on my behalf in, in all of those situations because I am through the position of Christ, and through the progressive work of my salvation, I am continually staying underneath the umbrella of God's favor. Now, if I disobey the principles, then I begin to step out of the umbrella, and I am getting un out from underneath the, the favor of God working on my behalf. That's why we have to continue to obey the voice of God, his written word, and stay underneath his covering so that his favor, his divine assistance, he can work for us in a way that he can't work for us when we're outside of the umbrella. Come on, I know it's bad luck to open up an umbrella in the room, but I don't care, okay? And so favor is, first of all, a position. But the other thing about favor is this. It can increase through prayer. Favor can actually be prayed for. You can pray for God's favor on your life. Here's two verses. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 4 says it like this. Then Jehoahaz sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. Here's a king praying for the favor of God, and it says the Lord listened to him. Job 33, 26 says it like this. 
Uh, he prays to God and finds favor with him. He sees God's face and shouts the joy. God makes him right with himself again. So we see two biblical instances where favor was prayed for and received. Now, in the New Testament, there are ten great prayer meetings in the book of Acts, and the Scripture says, great grace, great favor was upon the early church. You know, that's the reason we have weekly prayer meetings. It's the reason we had a prayer meeting this morning before the service. It's the reason that we hold consistently to a prayer meeting is because we want the favor of God upon this entity we call Stone Creek Church, the favor of the Lord. You know, I, I love this concept of favor because I believe that when I pray, I experience the hidden surprises of God that I did not plan on, but God gave them to me anyway. You know, the older I get, the more I pray like this. Lord, here's what I think I want. And I'd love it if you did this. But surprise me, Lord, if you got something better. You know? How many of you vehemently prayed for something, didn't get it, but what you got was better than what you were praying for? Surprise me, Lord. Uh, I, I just believe that. I, I, just a, this summer, we were on our, on, our, on our sabbatical, and we were leaving North Carolina to go up for my race in Pennsylvania. And as we go on these long trips, I often have this habit of just before we leave the driveway or as we're the first mile, I just sometimes will stop and just say, Lord, I pray that you would just, your blessing would be on us, you'd keep us safe. And for that, I remember I, that day I said, Lord, just surprise us on the way. We've got nine hours of driving. Just give us some good surprises that we didn't even ask for. Just let your favor rest on this trip. Well, about an hour or two later, we stopped at God's Chicken Place, the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you didn't know that, but it's in the Bible. It's not. Uh, that chicken has the favor of God on it, I think. I'm just messing with you. But... Um, we're in the line to have some breakfast at Chick-fil-A, and in the front of us pulls a Tesla, a Tesla truck, cyber truck. And my, my kids, when we travel, they try to count how many Teslas they see. We, um, so this one uh, is a cyber truck, and we, we, they'd never seen the inside of a cyber truck. And so we're in line. It's a rather long line. Line's not moving very fast. And so uh, my daughter says, my, my youngest, Evie, says, Dad, I'd really like to look on the inside of that truck. And I said, well, why don't we just get out and ask this guy if we can go look in the truck? So I got out. I said, hey, my daughter loves Tesla trucks. She'd like to see the inside of that truck. Can we look at your truck? He goes, sure, bring her in. So my daughter gets the free tour of a Tesla truck in a Chick-fil-A drive through She gets back in the car. It's awesome. She's beaming. Oh, it was amazing. She said, Dad. It's all because you prayed. It's all because you prayed. I thought, yes, Lord. She thinks it's because of prayer. I believe it. I believe it. And I just thought, you know, what a, what a little bit of the favor of the Lord on a trip in an unexpected way that she's correlating something she didn't plan on with God's answer to prayer. And, you know, I love what Corey Ten Boone said, that she said, she says, when I pray, I have, the, I have these coincidences of God in my life. And somebody said, that's just a bunch of hogwash. Everybody has coincidences in their life. And she says, well, here's what I know. The more I pray, the more coincidences I have. And I believe that prayer will increase the favor of God on your life. It will. But I want to bring it the remainder of our time together with this thought is that favor has many benefits to it. Why, why would I want God's favor? What, 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 how does it manifest and express itself to me? And when it shows up, what does it look like? Psalms 84 verse 11 says this, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace. Some translations say will give favor and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. The favor of God is the genesis of every good thing in your life. 
Everything that you consider good is a result of God's favor upon you. Now, I did some research today, and they say that on every Christmas season, there's about $30 billion worth of gift cards that are purchased in the United States. That's a lot of gift cards. How many of you have ever given a gift card? How many of you have ever received a gift card? How many of you have gift cards that you have not used in your house? Yeah, so it's the same. They say that in any given time in the United States, there are $23 billion worth of unused gift cards. Right now, at this moment, there's $23 billion in unused gift cards in the United States. The average person has $187 worth of unused gift cards. Woo! Some of you are going to go home right now. Where did I put that gift card? <laughs> Starbucks. Um, they have a term they call breakage. And, they, and they, the year, so it's a couple years old, but in the year 2022, they had $212 million worth of gift cards that went unused. Purchased, never used in a year's time. That was $212 million worth of profit that they got to claim without any expense added for, to them. Woo, come on. And you know, here's what I, I, when I heard that, I thought of this, is that often there's a lot of distinguishing characteristics, attributes of God's favor that go unclaimed in our life. Benefits that would come to us through prayer and obedience that we leave that have already been paid for by Jesus. On the cross, he paid for the favor of God. And when we claim that through prayer and by faith we walk in obedience to him, um, it unleashes the favor of God in several ways in our life. So the favor of God is always attached to the fear of God. And so when we come out from underneath the umbrella, we limit God's operation of his favor. And, and when we do not pray, the favor of God cannot be activated in a way that it could be if we did pray. So let me give you uh, just some favor statements from the Scripture, and then we'll, we'll be done. Uh, I have, I believe, 13 of these. Yeah, 13 of these. Don't worry, it's not a 13-point sermon. I, I would say to you, write these down. I'm going to put these on. They're already on the notes on our app and on our um, website. But I'm going to put them in a, in a greater way on the app for you to download so that you can make these as favored declarative statements that come out of your mouth. I think it's sometimes good, the Bible says, let us hold fast to the confession of our faith. And I have a, several sets of mantras that I will wake up in the morning and I will repeat over my life. There's something, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. There's something happens when you just say the promises of Scripture. So here's 13 declarations of favor that you can claim for your own life and pray over your life. First one is this, favor is a shield. Psalms 5.12, for surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. The favor of God will protect you. The next one, favor selects. Judges 6.17 Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. It's interesting that in many of the characters in Scripture, when an angel of the Lord or the Lord himself appears to them, he says, you are blessed and highly favored. It says Noah in Genesis 6, he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Daniel, you are favored and highly esteemed in heaven, is what this angel of the Lord said to him. So... <clears throat> This part of God's selection is connected to favor. Your assignment, the mission that God has for you, is part of his favor on your life. Favor is influence. Genesis 39, 21, the Lord was with him. This is Joseph. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Favor is influence. 
And you know what? The favor of God, think about this. If it can work in a prison, it can work anywhere. The favor of God cannot be in prison. It'll work any place, anywhere. <clears throat> It'll work in, with the boss you can't stand. Come on. Favor has petitions. This is uh, Daniel 9.17. Now our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. So this is the petition of favor. Favor increases. Leviticus 26.9. It says, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers. And I will keep my covenant with you. You know, often when we look at the scriptures, we think the Bible begins with a curse, the fall of man, but it actually begins with favor. What is the first words that God speaks to Adam and Eve? He says, be fruitful and multiply. That was the words of favor over their life. It didn't begin with a curse. That came later. It began with favor. So favor will increase you. I think it's appropriate for you to ask God to give you increase financially, increase in um, reputation, increase in opportunity. It, favor will increase anything it touches, any person it touches. There's another one, favor blesses. Genesis 1.28, here it is. Then God blessed them and God said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Favor blesses your life. Favor leads to recognition. Ezra 7, 28. Who has extended his good favor to me? This is Esther talking about the king, that the king extended favor to her and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials. Because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage and gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. You know, the favor of God will differentiate you from every other one of your peers. Did you know that? All things being equal, God will cause you to stand before leaders of this world and you will have uncommon success and favor because of the favor of God on you. You will influence people you should never influence. You'll be places you should never be. All because of the hand of God taking you and putting you in an audience that he wants you to have influence over. The favor of the Lord. That's one of the things I pray over my children often. God puts your hand heavy on them and favor them in their life. Uh, favor restores, Job 33, 26. <clears throat> he prays to God and finds favor with him, Job says. He sees God's face and shouts for joy. He is restored by God to his righteous state. An aspect of favor is that there is an aspect of restoration. As you experience his favor, he restores the things that you've lost. Favor. Favor endures. Psalms 30, verse 5, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Ooh, favor. I like that. I love that. Morning ha has a, a beginning date and an end date, but favor has no end. That, it's eternal. He favors me here and he favors me in heaven. That's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, favor endures through all seasons. Oh, favor. Psalm 69, verse 13. But I pray to you, O Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Now, I said it has no end date, but it does have moments in the Scripture where it has periods where it is incredibly enhanced on behalf of the people, where they're under a season of uncommon favor and uncommon grace that has a clear beginning and has a clear end. Here's 11. It says you can have favor in the marketplace, Proverbs 3. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. The favor of God will always lead to the favor with man. God will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. 
God will work in both of those scenarios. And some of you who work in the marketplace, in the education system, school system, God wants to bless you in those places and give you favor in the marketplace. He'll favor your business. He'll favor your classroom. He'll favor the works of your hands. Uh, Twelve, favor promotes. Again, Esther said, the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favor in, the, in his sight more than all the others. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. You know, I, I pray for it just about every week that the people of Stone Creek would have raises and promotions. I believe that. That's a great place for you to clap right there. You should have clapped. You don't want a promotion? But notice, you're not promoting yourself. God himself will promote you. Will orchestrate events in your life to push you forward for whatever circumstance or reason he wants. And the last one is this, verse 13, is that favor refreshes. Worship team, would you come? Proverbs 16, 15 says this, when the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. The favor of the Lord will refresh you. Thirteen ways that favor will, will manifest. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to pick two to three of those in your mind right now. If you've got taken notes, circle two or three of them, highlight two or three of them. Remember two, two or three of them. I just want you to find the one that works for you. And I, here's why I just felt like um, I wanted to end this today. And when I was in cross country and track, and I would do a lot of running, and even now when I like, like to run, one of the things that they would always teach us when we were running is especially at the end, you always want to finish strong. And you always want to leave something for the end. And I think of it like this, is that when you running race, don't ever look back at the finish line. I've seen people look over their right shoulder and get passed on their left shoulder because they were looking back when they should have been looking forward. Part of finishing strong is looking forward. And we are about seven weeks, just over seven weeks from now until the end of the year. And I have no idea what the year's been like for you. Maybe it's been filled with pain and loss and problem and all kinds of stuff. But I believe in prayer this week, God gave me a little word for you. You see, hidden in this psalm, it's the psalm of grace, the psalm of abundance, Psalm 65. It's a wonderful psalm. I've prayed this I don't know how many times over my life this year. But Psalm 65, it says this, it's all these blessings. And then it says this in verse 11, and you will crown the year with your favor. One translation says you will crown the year with your bounty. And the crown is, is I think of that, it, it's that, He'll make sure at the end that it is crowned, it is covered in such a way that when you look upon it, you will say, the Lord's favor, the Lord's bounty, his abundance was on it. And I just am praying, I prayed today, early this morning, this simple little thought, that in the next seven weeks, God, upon the people of Stone Creek, would you unleash uncommon favor in such a way that you will crown them, them, their families, their businesses, their classroom, their circumstances, things that they were hopeful for, waiting for, believing for, or things that they didn't even know you wanted to do for them. I'm just praying that you'll have some hidden treasures that come out of dark places, hidden surprises, unexpected opportunities, a good report, a healing, a restoration, a time of prayer that completely restores and refreshes you, a, 
a depression that seemingly lifts off of you replaced with a supernatural joy. A financial turnaround that you didn't think was possible at the end of the year, but it happened in a moment. I'm just praying from here to the end of the year that God's favor would rest upon you in an uncommon way, doing for you what you cannot do for yourself, and in some cases, you didn't even expect him to do. May the Lord crown the year with his favor. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we get ready to close. If you can stand, stand. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Put your hands out in front of you in the position to receive. A position of humility. There's just a sweet spirit in this place today. And I just think of people in here who don't yet know Jesus or you've walked with the Lord, but you left your relationship with the Lord. I don't believe you can lose your salvation, but I do believe you can leave it. And maybe you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've never got under the umbrella of his favor. You've never cooperated him with a moment of salvation with the Lord. The Bible says he demonstrated his love, his favor towards you by sending his son to die for you. There's no other umbrella provided in scripture to cover your sin. That's it. And if you're here, you can't earn it, but you can receive it. Ask Jesus to save you. Jesus, I get under the umbrella. Or maybe you need to return home. You've wandered from underneath the principles of obedience to the word and you've made excuses you've tried to reason it and there's no reasoning that will change the principles of God's word you have to obey them get underneath the favor of the Lord again and some of the hardship you may be facing is you've wandered outside of your umbrella and that's the chastening of the Lord the trouble has not been the enemy it's been the Lord He's putting roadblocks. He said to the apostle Paul, Paul, why do you kick against the goads? You need to turn today and get right underneath the umbrella of his favor again. And say, Jesus, I repent. It's a good word. I come home to you. And as these people are praying, I want to speak to those who are already in Christ. I love that. Faith is something I can believe in and something I can believe for. And I want you just as your, as your hands are in front of you, just in a posture of humility. Come on, Christian, like we do every day. We're not going to rush to the petition. Let's start with welcoming the presence of God. Can we do that? Can we welcome the presence of the Lord? Maybe it's been a while since you've centered your thoughts, your words, and your heart on the Lord. Just begin to say, Jesus, I love you. I bless you. I honor you. I thank you. I need your presence. I'm thirsty for you. I draw near to you, Lord. I enter into the presence of God. That's it. That's it. And now I just want you to thank the Lord. Favor is the genesis of every good thing. So thank him for the favor that's already on your life. Would you do that? Thank him for the goodness that you see. Thank him for the spouse and the health. Thank him for the, the resources, the roof. Thank him for the things. Where have you seen the goodness of God? Take a moment. It's been a week since we've done this. Thank him for the most recent favor on your life. That's it. And just to say thank you for him being, just thank him for being your umbrella. Come on, thank him for covering you and saving you. Lord, I thank you that you've covered me. I see you. You've covered me with your favor, Lord. 
No, I said his favor can be prayed for. It can be an experienced in a way that you, you've never thought it could be experienced by praying. Where do you need to see the favor of the Lord? Do you need to be refreshed? Do you need to be restored? Do you need him to be a shield, a protector? Do you need him to heal you? Where do you need the favor of the Lord? I want to give you just one minute here, and I want you verbally out loud to ask for the favor of the Lord. Would you do that? Ask for his favor now. Kings of nations said, Lord, would you favor me? Come on, if he can favor nations he can favor families he can favor businesses he can favor classrooms he can favor people favor lord favor favor let your favor be at work in my finances let your favor be at work upon my life i said favor in my health favor restore it to me that's it. Ask for the favor of the Lord. Ask him to crown the year. As we put a cap on a year in the next seven weeks, ask for the favor of the Lord. Say, Lord, help me to finish strong. The favor of the Lord. Lord, I pray over these people, Stone Creek, over my own life. Lord, we're under the umbrella. Lord, it rains, there's pain, there's problems, there's trouble, but the favor of the Lord works in the midst of those. Lord, let these next seven weeks, Lord, I pray that, that uncommon things happen. Let uncommon provision be given. Let promotions happen. Let circumstances be turned. Let relationships be restored. Let reports that we thought were going to be one way come another way. Let there be hidden surprises, Lord. The things that we wouldn't even know you had planned for us, like hidden treasures in dark places. Lord, let them be timely released. Lord, let the, let the favor of the Lord, the bounty, the abundance of God be released upon us over these next few weeks. The favor of the Lord. Let it come. And now, let's let this, the greatest thing about favor is the gift of the Lord. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's a gift given. And so let's thank the gift giver. Let's lift our hands as we get ready to close. Let's lift them all the way up. And can we just for a few moments here just worship the gift giver, the one who gives favor that we don't deserve? Can you lift up his name a little bit? Can you just say, I glorify you, I magnify you? Come on, let it come out of your mouth. Just worship the Lord. I, there's none like him. One look from him can change everything. One word from his mouth can turn a situation. Come on, if he just stands next to you, that's enough. Well, that's awesome. He's the God of glory. He's the name above all names. We speak your name. The favored son, Jesus. We speak his name. Would you just say his name, Jesus? We just lift it up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.